when it comes to car launches, most times it's just about driving the car. This time, however, our journey was about more than just the car, or in this case, Bucky. I'm in a very busy Kebeja driving the all new Ford single cab range. We're gonna be loading compost, loading trees, and doing all the things that a single cab is supposed to do. So let me get started and drive the XL single cab 4x4 first and find out what that one's like. Single cab workhorses don't only save on price, vet and parking space, but are designed to live a hard working life. A two litre diesel bucket like this needs to be able to carry a lot of things and that's exactly what we're going to do now. We're going to load them up with some compost and trees. This of course is the 125, 405 Newton meter version which should be sufficient for the job. A couple of kilos of compost loaded, we were almost ready to go. Interestingly though, the single cab has exactly the amount of space on the back for a Jojo tank. Once loaded, it was time for our first stop, a trek to a drought-stricken area and a school that needed some assistance. We did, however, stop to take in the incredible scenery on the way and grab some supplies. So a quick stop for supplies and a pie, and then it's back on the road. But let's look at the specs of this XL model. Starts at 545,000 for this one, which is the 4x4 six-speed automatic. And you get a whole bunch of standard options. Fuel consumption is rated at 7.7 .7 liters. But if you want to upgrade the car, you're going to need to get what's called the XL upgrade pack. And that's why I got my phone over here. And that gives you things like black rolls, mirror housings, bigger wheels, dual zone climate control, wireless charging, and the list goes on. So be sure when you order your Ford to check out the full available packs for your car because there's a lot and you can customize your vehicle depending on if it's you driving your own car for deliveries or sending one of the juniors. As the tarmac roads disappeared and the roads got more ratted, we explored some areas of South Africa I've never even heard of or visited before. After getting my hands dirty, I asked for a tap, but there was none. This is the daily reality facing many South African kids. But this wasn't our only stop. We then went even further inland on roads and into areas where drought was an everyday part of life. This was where we met the team from Gift of the Givers. I'm here with Mohammed from Gift of the Givers. So are you from this area? How did you end up here? I'm from here. I'm born here. Wow. My forefathers all okay. from Adelaide here. Yeah. You guys are doing some incredible work in this area. Tell me a bit more about what's actually happening here. Look, we uh, actually, because of the drought, and besides the drought, also water assistance, because you know, you've got other interruptions, load shedding, municipal infrastructure, ailing infrastructure. So we get a lot of calls coming in from different towns and uh, we've got a lot of successful uh, high yielding poles in Adelaide and we've got trucks that our water tankers run and deliver. So what happens is we fill up here mm -hmm. and then we assist the community whoever is in need of water, it may be businesses, hospitals, community. Yeah. So Mohamed, thank you so much for everything no you do. No problem, thank Thanks you. Thanks for your time Anytime. as well. Thanks yeah. a lot, my keeper. With the last of the cargo successfully delivered, we stopped to refuel our convoy of rangers before heading off to the last stop on our journey. And in keeping with the water theme, it seemed appropriate to pause for reflection at the imposing Kharib Dam.
If you needed something that would do everything with seats and take the family to school, then obviously a double cab is what you want. Just ask any of the millions of South Africans that have ever purchased one. But the cost savings make a lot of sense. And let's not forget that tax back. In my mind, the super cab segment might have a new king.